<laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Steve. <laughs> and Jay. <laughs> Jay from Ink and Paint <laughs> on What the Jason. Tonight, we're already starting off on a bad foot. Uh, here we go. We have big, big news to talk about this week. Disney officially said that the future of their industry is in streaming services and not in the theater. So we're going to talk about what that means. Here we go. Oh, man. Jay. So... First of all, how's it going? What are you up to? Anything exciting? Nothing exciting. Just uh, we put together the uh, snowblower today. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you posted that. You're so excited about your new toy. Your I wife am. got a backpack and you got a, a snowblower. There you I, go. I, I see how it's equal here. <laughs> so, how are you? Uh, same old. This Honestly, we've been talking about this exact news story now for since they announced it this week. My mom was talking to me about it. My brother-in-law mm -hmm. was talking to me about it. So I think that this is definitely worthy of a big discussion. Yep. Uh, this week, like I said in the intro, Disney said that the future of their entertainment is in streaming, not in the theaters. And then send it to the internet! Now, that was riddled with a whole bunch of questions, and it didn't say that they're done with the theatrical experience. It means that their focus for the first time in the history of the company has shifted from getting people into theaters. Now it's going to be about putting uh, stuff on streaming services like Disney Plus instead. Right. I mean, this, this has a, there's like 10 different things we could talk about here. Uh, and the big one is, uh, in my theory, Disney is always chief and commander of entertainment. They are number one by a mile, followed next by probably, I would say, uh, you know, like Sony or something like that. But I'll tell you straight up, them announcing that Disney is done with this or them not making it their focus, if one other one of those studios, whether it's Sony or Miramax, I don't even know if Miramax exists anymore, but you know what I mean? One of those ones, if, yeah. one of them, if one of them follows suit, I think it's the end of the theater industry, like for good. I, I always was sort of saying that, oh, you're never going to get rid of it all the way. I think that the after this is done, if it happens like this, the only thing that's going to be left standing are like those little independent theaters. Like we have one in Phoenix where you pretty much show whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I just think that this put this is the driving nail. I think it's over. What do you think? Um, I agree with you. I mean, we've been kind of talking not directly towards Disney per se, but uh kind of with this whole COVID thing on what the theaters are going to look like in the future. We've been talking that for, about that for a while now, and it sounds like uh, Disney is taking that uh, that step forward and uh, kind of putting some things in place to go out and do that. So, um, yeah. Uh, well, we, you, we have talked about this multiple, multiple times. Sky, our director, who's hiding behind the camera today, which is such a hack move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She, you did some research on it before, and uh, we went through it on its own show. But still, I think that having a studio like Disney literally come out and say, we're not making the theater experience uh, our focus anymore, I think that is going to be the, – that's the hardest move that a studio can make is to say that. They're literally yeah. saying bye to over 100 years of – this is new. This is a precedent that they don't want to take. But I think that once they did it, I'm telling you, Universal will be next. Because if Universal also takes theirs away, then next summer or the summer after that, it's gone. You won't have Jurassic. Well, actually, they'll probably put Jurassic World in the theaters. But that means from the future, they're not going to be paying to make a lot of big budget films. It's going to be all their streaming quality. And mm -hmm. I think that that's going to change everything. One more studio follows Disney's suit, and I think it's over. I just I don't know how you survive as a theater. You can't. Yeah. They can't all. You can't just make the AMC's all theater rentals where you just rent a hundred bucks and do it. This is a bigger deal, right. um, and I think this is going to kill the industry. And also, it'll kill a piece of my soul, being that I love going to the theaters. I love seeing them the day they come out on the screen, a second time on there. The fact that that's over is blowing my mind. I, yeah. I just can't imagine that that's going to happen. And it also means another big thing, if it's true, I do have to invest in a new uh, TV. <laughs> I have to get something <laughs> that's nicer because if it's it's one thing if it's The Mandalorian and then a couple other shows, but if everything is going to be straight on there, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, so here's the other question I have for you on this because okay. the theater thing is a personal thing that I think is a big deal, but yeah. these people watching are very interested in Disney. So... 
you wouldn't be watching the show if you weren't. Or maybe you were because you just like good quality stuff. What does this, what do you think that they're going to do then? Are they still going to film full length feature films and put them on Disney Plus? Or do you think we're going to see a lot more of what they're doing with Star Wars than they're doing the miniseries? Eight episodes, six episodes, ten episodes, or, and then maybe come back for a second season, something like that. Where do you think it's going to go? Or is it going to be a hybrid approach of both or what? Well, I think it's going to be a, a approach of both. I don't think we're going to uh, see the end of the uh, full-length uh, movies. Even though they're going to be on a different uh, platform, I don't think we're going to see the end of that. Um, I think we're going to see more of the continuation of you know of shows that go seven, eight episodes, and then you wait for a year or two, and then you know see something else. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be more or less a hybrid of both of them. Yeah, I, I think you're going to be right. People still want to just watch a movie. They don't always yeah. want to sit there with their kids and watch eight se- uh, eight episodes for a season or whatever. So I think you're definitely on to something. What mm-hmm. really sucks about this, though, is Disney is smart, and they're going to restrict budget. They just laid off 28,000 staff. They had to. Um, but, you know, they yeah. don't do things um, unless there's a, a game plan ahead. And I'm going to tell you, I think that this changes the way that they write stories. I mean, so in this theory, are they going to pay the same for a, a, the next Marvel, like Avengers film? Because they already have those slated. So think about this. Almost all of the Marvel films in production right now or coming out are in some stage of pre-production. Some of yeah. them, it's too late. You can't really change your mind and go back because of COVID and change it. They're stuck. What does this mean uh, for something like Guardians of the Galaxy 3, where James Gunn isn't even in this world right now? He's working on Suicide Squad. And then what's going to happen? Do you think they're going to come back and say, you have this glorious script. Can you make this into a, a, a four episode series? Like, I, I, I think it changes everything at this it point. Does. You could see. Well, I mean, what are they doing? Sky, we, we talked about this before. What are they doing with Justice League on HBO? They're releasing the movie in four one hour segments. So in theory, now it's going to be a four hour long film. I just can't imagine somebody like James Gunn going, yeah, I'm making Guardians 3 and it's going to be straight to Disney+. Plus." To me, that just seems weird. Like, I don't think financially they can do it. How are you going to make your money back? Yeah. How, you can't make your money back just by Disney Plus subscriptions. You just can't do it. Yeah, they're, yeah. But the last point on this, and I think, think about all of this stuff that's going on and the fact that Soul is coming out to Disney Plus without the $30 rental, by the way. That's a big move, I think. Uh, on Christmas Day. So, first of all, I'm super pumped to see it, and I'm glad that we get to see it at home. I'm just glad we get to see it, period, instead of them delaying it like everything else. Yeah. But Jay, does this mean? Does this mean that Pixar is going to be making films only meant for Disney Plus? I think so. Um, I think uh, we've seen kind of a little bit of a change with Pixar uh, in the last few years, anyway, but. Uh, I think it's going to be strictly for uh, Disney Plus now. I think you're going to see a lot more of their little short stories that uh, pop up on Disney Plus, uh, but their full length, I think you'll also basically see on Disney Plus. Yeah, that's cr- it's absolutely crazy to me that we won't be able to go see the new one like big in the theaters. But yeah. uh, I guess so. And you know the thing that I'm wondering is, so if Disney Plus will host, if host those ones, do you think Disney animation is going to be doing the same thing? So, like, if they made, like, a Frozen 3, it would pretty much be straight on there. Uh, I mean, they're in the same company. Why would you have two different models? And at right. that point, does that mean that every other animated film that's similar, like, you know, Despicable Me 3 or 4, whichever number is on next, Minions 2, are they just going to say, we're putting those straight on Peacock or HBO Max or whatever their partner is? It mm-hmm. seems like this is a very viable potential I thing now, and that's I don't know, it's just crazy to me that we won't just be able to go see it the first night it comes out. I, it's something that we've yeah. always done. Um, we were lucky enough to see Onward in the theaters the day that it came out. And then once again, wait, it wasn't the day it came out. It was that weekend. And uh, then they put it on Disney Plus because we saw it right before COVID lockdown. So right. uh, I know that they say that they lost money for Onward not being in the theaters uh, like it was, but they also quadrupled the subscribers and retention uh, retention of the existing ones. So they still make money. I just don't know, it's it's harder to track. Like how much did Pixar make on this one film uh, yeah. at home versus over there? Because if Disney Plus is taking it, then 
I don't know, do you go by new subscribers? Do you go by, I don't know, it's just weird to track how much money they'll be making. It's going to be muddled, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah. Do you think we're going to see just, the uh, end of the whole $30 uh, rent the movie, buy the movie type thing? I love that question because I have no idea. Uh, I don't know if they didn't get enough from Mulan that they just said no, or mm. if this is more of a kid, family friendly, it's Christmas, It's by definition it's Christmas, yeah. you know, uh, and they put it on there. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I cannot imagine that that's the case with a Star Wars or a Marvel film. Those yeah. budgets are too big. Um, and also, I, I, I'm not just the guy that's throwing out money for nothing, but Disney Plus needs to start increasing their monthly fees. They're still so cheap compared to everybody else. It's like, at this point, with all these new things that they're putting out there, they have to start getting it back. And yeah. uh, I'll, I, I would still be very happy to rent these for 30 bucks. Soul, I've been so excited about. I definitely would have. We talked about this over here. Uh, you were asking me how much I pay to go see uh, Ghostbusters. And I said <laughs> something that was kind of offensive because it was so high. But um, I still would pay for most of these movies. Even something like Frozen 2, I would have paid the 30 bucks. Um, first of all, I always feel like with the studios, you have to pay for what you get. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm against the pirating and all that crap. But um, the other thing is, uh, I, I, some of these ones, I'm just so excited. I want to see them. And if it yeah. costs $30 to watch it, I'm okay with that. But it, it, like you said before, we kind of did this. It depends on which movie. Right, right. It's not just like anything I approve of. I'll, yeah, 30 bucks for every movie, mm -hmm. that's fine. But um, I can tell you any Star Wars or Marvel film, any Star Wars, Marvel, or Pixar, um, they just get my 30 buck. I, I'll do any of them pretty much. I, I think that they all look that good. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that. Do you think your uh, kids are going to enjoy this more? Because you're going to have a lot of time sitting in front of the TV watching new stuff. Would you prefer a movie versus a series or maybe not? Um... If we're stuck watching uh, anything in front of the TV, I would say probably a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could see that. I think that series are more for teens and up, just because you have yeah. to have the attention span to follow through. But anyway. Yep. Well, I mean, that's that's about it. We don't have to keep going. I just thought it was crazy and worth telling people. Disney is. is now focusing solely. Well, their main focus is the streaming service, not yeah. big theatrical, uh, theatrical releases anymore, which is heartbreaking and crazy. It also just goes to show that they must have done enough science and, and polling people to realize that even if there was a vaccine tomorrow, this thing's got legs. This is going to take yeah. a while for people to want to pack back into the theaters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This was an educated decision, and eh, it's just blowing my mind. So, Real quick, before we end, though, I had another question on that. Do you think that Disney will come out with a different or another streaming service just to go ahead and buy the movie to watch it before so it won't necessarily be on Disney Plus but it'll be a so you're not paying a subscription hmm. so like uh, so like for example right now um, if I wanted to go watch Mulan it's on mm -hmm. Disney Plus but on my sling you can literally click rent now and it's the same thing yeah so uh, I, I would assume that whatever they're using here they would continue because also that would get confusing you'd have disney plus and then disney plus premium or something like that yeah and then you yeah. have to go on there and it would be almost like a library of all of the stuff that you would be able to get right yeah it would be a you would you would have to pay for the app and you obviously wouldn't have to pay for the subscription but it would just be your titles that you could go and purchase right right purchase to rent or purchase to purchase and i don't see probably purchase to own because i would say i would think that after a certain time what's going to happen is it'll eventually be thrown onto disney plus so i would say probably yeah i think that I, I i don't know if they'll have an option to do the purchase and own but mm -hmm. i mean right now they'll just have that new section on disney plus on the left that it'll just say like premium or whatever it's called and that's where mulan was and then yeah. there'll always be something new in that box and then you're just going to click that and to keep it to own, I don't know why that would matter. It would just probably go into your library, but that's why I buy everything off of Apple and it just kind of goes to all my devices. So, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I hope whatever they do, that it makes sense and it works out because we got some big stuff coming up and 
seeing it all on eight episode series there's a little bit of a lack of climax to that yeah. you know sometimes you want to get in and see your two and a half hour movie and then be done with it like can you imagine if endgame was like a three episode thing i you would lose oh all of that synchronicity you'd have to re-watch it to remember and all that crap so i, I hope it, i hope they don't change their entire filming format i just i sadly i think they will they're gonna make more money by keeping people around for eight weeks instead of one night you know yeah no i understand that huh yeah well we'll have to see all right all right yep anyway crazy news uh thanks again mm -hmm. subscribe to what the jason uh i've been steve that's, I'm that's jay, jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep on subscribing and watching and Sky, say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> that was like Bye, instant everybody. volume there. <laughs> yes, it was. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye guys. Okay. Nope, we'll start that again. <laughs>